In our discussion on sound waves, we said that sound waves experience a shift in frequency when there's relative motion between the source of sound and the observer. In a similar way, light also experiences a shift in frequency when there's relative motion between the source of light and the observer, and this is known as the Doppler effect for light. Now, there exists a very important distinction between the Doppler effect for sound waves and the Doppler effect for light. Light. Because light travels in a vacuum with a very high velocity, by the special theory of relativity, we cannot actually make a distinction between the motion of the observer and the motion of the source of light. And because of this, instead of having four equations that describe the Doppler effect for sound waves, for light, we only have two equations that describe the Doppler effect for light. One equation describes relative motion towards and the second equation describes relative motion away from the source and the observer. So, let's begin by deriving these equations. So basically, we're going to set up diagram A and diagram B and we're going to use these diagrams to derive our equation. So, Let's begin by describing diagram A. In diagram A, we have a stationary light source given by point S and a stationary observer given by point O. At some initial time of zero seconds, light source S emits a sound wave and after some time, or emits a light wave, and after some time, it emits a second light wave. So light wave 1 is given by crest 1 and light wave 2 is given by crest 2 and the wavelength, the distance between our two crests, is given by lambda naught. Now, let's move on to diagram B. In diagram B, we have a slightly different case. Here, we have relative motion towards the source and the observer. So, source is moving with velocity V towards the stationary observer. Now, at some initial time of T0, the source emits a light wave that is given by crest 1. Now, crest 1 moves a certain distance over a certain time interval. If the time interval is delta t, then it moves a distance, c multiplied by delta t. At the same time, this source moves a distance given by v times delta t. At that particular moment, it releases a second light wave given by crest 2. And the distance between these two crests in case b is given by lambda. So let's move on to step one. So once again, let's suppose that delta t represents the time interval between the two consecutive crests. And this is observed as by observer in diagram B. So we can basically represent delta, uh, we can represent our lambda in terms of these two quantities. So our lambda, the wavelength, is equal to this distance, c multiplied by delta t minus this distance, v multiplied by delta t. So let's call this equation i. Now let's move on to step two. Now based on the special theory of relativity, time dilation will take place in diagram B. So if we let delta t naught be the time interval between the two consecutive crests, in diagram A and delta t be the time interval between two consecutive crests in diagram B, then we can use this equation, which is the time dilation equation. So delta t is equal to delta t naught divided by this quantity, square root of y minus v squared divided by c squared, and let's call this equation 2i. Now let's move on to diagram or step 3 and let's examine diagram diagram A. So, in diagram A, we have the stationary light source and we have the stationary observer. So, we want to basically represent delta T naught in terms of our frequency. So, delta T naught is equal to 1 over the frequency F naught of this particular light wave. Now, because frequency F naught is equal to C divided by lambda naught, we have this is equal to 1 divided by C divided by lambda naught. So, this 
goes on top and delta t naught, the time interval in diagram A, is equal to lambda naught divided by c. Let's call this equation 3. Now let's take equation 1 and let's combine it with equation 2i and equation 3i. So combining equations i, 2i, and 3i will basically lead us to the final Doppler effect for light equation. So let's begin with equation i. So lambda is equal to c multiplied by delta t minus v multiplied by delta t. Delta t appears on both sides. We can take that out as shown in this diagram. Next, we take equation 2i and we replace delta t with this quantity. So we have c minus v multiplied by delta t divided by the square root of 1 minus v squared divided by c squared. Next, we take this and replace that with equation 3i. So we have c minus v divided by c, where this bottom c comes from this, multiplied by lambda naught divided by the square root of y minus v squared divided by c squared. Now we can take this c and multiply it by the denominator and we can bring it inside by squaring it. So this is equal to, so lambda is equal to c minus v multiplied by lambda naught divided by, so we combine the denominators, we have the square root of c squared multiplied by 1 minus v squared divided by c squared. So if we distribute the c squared, we see that this c squared will cancel and the bottom becomes this, the square root of c squared minus v squared. Now we can actually distribute by doing the following. So this is equal to c minus v, the square root of it, multiplied by the square root of c plus v. So we have this on top and this on the bottom. So we can combine them by basically subtracting 1 from 1 and a half, and we get the following result. So lambda is equal to lambda naught multiplied by the square root of c minus v plus c plus v. So we have lambda is equal to lambda naught multiplied by the square root of c minus v divided by c plus v. Now we know that lambda is equal to c divided by f and lambda naught is equal to c divided by f naught. So basically we can replace lambda with our c divided by f and we can replace this with c divided by f naught. And if we rearrange and solve for f, we get the following equation. So this is the Doppler effect for light when the source and the observer are moving towards one another as seen in diagram B. So f is equal to f naught multiplied by the square root of c plus v divided by c minus v. Now we can also derive the second equation by basically changing this to the case where our source is moving away from the stationary observer. If we follow the same steps for that diagram, that will lead us directly to this equation. So basically we replace our v with a negative v. So this top becomes negative v and the bottom becomes positive v. So this is the second equation for the Doppler effect for light for the case when the source and the observer are moving away from one another.